right, so we got some of the uh, foundation joists across here attached. Um, I'm just going to go over a little bit of what I'm doing. So, as you can see, the edge of the trailer is right here. It's 102 inches from each of the side strap bars to each bar. What I'm going to be doing is underneath, I'm going to be welding on right there onto this quarter inch or it might be a little bit more than quarter inch um, iron but uh, I'm going to be welding on a three by three um, bracket onto here um, yeah so that is the plan so it'll come out to about right here actually right there and then I'll have one and a half or two inch overhang um, yeah so that's the plan, every joist all the way down. So that's 62 um, pieces of angle iron that I'm there. Um, so anyways, yeah, so it'll have a two inch overhang past the angle iron. Um, so the wall itself is two and a half inches, or you know, it's two by four on there. So it'll be opening by um, three and a half to, yeah, so one and, one and a half inches it'll be on. On the iron, um, putting the weight down. But yeah, so anyways, um, all, I've already cut all of these to 108 and 7 eighths. Got them laid on there, and then I'm just pre-drilling. Well, not really pre-drilling. I'm just sticking all my screws in over here on this table before I stick them up. So I've already uh, marked off of the two by fours where my studs go. And um, and then I'm just taking all my screws and just put them down, two on each one. So yep, that's what's going down right now. All right, so you might already be wondering what in the world you're hanging over the edge. Probably not a good um, thumb. If you're going to cantilever a floor like this, is you do not want to exceed the width of the board. As far as your distance from the supported edge. So on a two by four, three and a half inches, you would not want to stick your edge over whatever your actual support beam is by three and a half inches, no more. Um, compared to three and a half inches over the edge, I would still think that'd be too much weight um, bearing down on it and it would eventually bow. And I'm going to be welding on a three by three angle iron peach joist underneath each joist seems to be having some difficulties. So it's not going to be sticking over, um, but two inches overhang on each side. So like I said, max you can do three and a half inches. I feel safe with doing two inches because I'm not just putting down a two by four foundation and building on top of it. I am putting down one and one eighth inch Advantech OSB, the super floor. You could probably build your house strictly out of that stuff with no 2x4s and it would stand. Um, the stuff weighs 125, 128 pounds per sheet. Um, it's going to be amazing. But yeah, so standard flooring is 3 quarter inch or 23, 30 seconds. It's about like that. Advantech is like that. I mean, it's a super thick, super strong. I, I could have probably just put the Advantech flooring directly down on top of the uh, metal going across and it probably would have been pretty firm <laughs> but uh, it's much better to over engineer than under engineer so I'm, I'm pretty certain that uh, there won't be any problem with doing a 2x4 foundation like this having a 2 inch cantilevered overhang um, and then putting my 1 and 1 8 inch Advantech on top of that it's going to be really amazing you guys will have to wait and see how it turns out
making uh, three inch three inch by three sixteenth inch um, angle iron, and I'm cutting it up into sixty two chunks to put under all of my joists that are going to be sticking over the edge of the trailer. So you see, I've got to cut. I cut on this side first and then we'll flip it over and match all the cuts on that side. So, very labor intensive. Have the, uh, have the uh, metal sliders a lot of times do the cuts for you, but it, it's like a dollar a cut. So, if you have a job uh, buy a couple of blades because you're going to burn through them. Alright, so I am drilling through. 3 16th angle iron. This stuff tried to get you up high enough so you can see the drilling process. So I'm using uh, titanium coated drill bits um, from DeWalt. As you know, I think a 21 piece set of them all the way up to half inches, like 25 bucks. Um, I've already drilled through 30, 30 pieces. Um, I'm not using a pilot bubble. But with titanium bits, you want to keep them from getting too hot. Because once the coating's gone, um, it's not going to drill very well. So I've got my little rig here set up. I'm just spraying it, I'm pushing down, rotating the pressure on it. When you see the bit start to steam, or you see the metal start to steam that you're drilling into, you know that it's certainly kind of hot. I'm just using water. I've got a little plastic drop fan lid underneath me. Yeah, just push. Spray, push, spray, push. Like I said, I've already drilled through 30 of these. And the uh, bit is still going strong. oxide could handle higher heat than the titanium. But if you're using drill press, drill press especially, um, you don't need to worry about high speed so much as um, just keeping the bit cool. Any kind of friction, no matter how fast you're going, it's going to heat away at the uh, coating. Put all the bits here with the birds this morning and welding on the side of the trailer the supports so that I can go over the edge. So you can see my 3 by 3 by 3 16 inch angle iron. Um, I have never welded before in my life. I'm actually MIG welding right now um, as my, uh, my lovely uh, welds can show you. I haven't removed the slag but they're still pretty rough. So anyways, getting the hang of welding, um, MIG welding is way easier than stick welding, at least that's what they say. Um, I might try some stick welding as well. But anyways, so I'm just going around just grinding off the paint with my handy dandy grinder. And then I am <clears throat> basically putting these on the bottom here. Right? gotten rid of the paint and just centering them and then I am holding them in place with a little metal clamp and then soldering on one side or welding sorry 
on one side and then I just keep on doing that all the way down. Once I finish getting them all aligned, then I lift up the deck so I can weld on the top and on the bottom or on the side. So I'm just welding all the way around. And you can see back here. I've already done it on these. So yeah. So I'll be doing it on both sides. So I can see they're all set up and ready to go. So here's the trailer with all the, uh, the brackets. Weld it on all the way down. It's all been bolted up. Um, I haven't cleaned off any of the slag or anything. Not until I paint. Come on, camera. There you go. And then I have one of these uh, coated lag screws. They're not galvanized, um, and they're not lag screws either. They're zip screws or something like that. Anyways, <clears throat> they're about three and five eighths inches long. As I go fully up into the 2x4. Um, but yeah, so anyways, the deck is adhered down on all sides. And down here at the end, I've uh, still got my clamp. Uh, down here in the end, I had to weld on this little two and a half inch square angle iron to extend it out so that I could support this corner better. That's just a little spacer piece there. Um, so yeah, so the corner is really supported on both sides. Um, yeah, so now what I have to do is I have to go now and make sure that all of my joists are all 16 inches on center all the way down. I mean, I've obviously done that on the outside, but now I need to go into the middle and screw them into all the uh, 2x4 runners and uh, make sure they stay 16 inches on center so when I'm putting down my subfloor um, there's no um, misplacement of the joints. So, yeah. Lots of screws. And I am doing this all with screws. Since I'm going into uh, ACQ lumber, treated lumber, I figured I might as well use um, deck screws, but also I, I wanted more pulling power um, than even uh, a ring shank nails would give. So it takes a little bit longer, but if I make a mistake, it's easy. I just unscrew it, chop it a little bit off, raise it, whatever. It's been uh, much better to use screws in this.